Mitakuye Oyasen. Hello, my relatives. My name is Annette Lee. I am mixed race Lakota. My family name is Wambli Luta, Red Eagle. My communities are Ojibwe and Dakota Lakota. I'm speaking to you from the place we call Mani Sota Makoche, the land where the water reflects the sky, Minnesota, U.S. I want to acknowledge Wichonk Oyate. I want to acknowledge the above and below. I want to thank you for being here, making time to listen to these words. And I want to acknowledge all those that have died in this terrible COVID storm and their families. I am an astronomer. I'm proud to say that I've been teaching introductory astronomy and doing astronomy education research for the past 15 years. I have the honor and privilege of working with collaborators in indigenous astronomy all over the world. Last, I want to say I'm also a professional visual artist, and I'm really proud to keep that fire going. So when we think about relationship to the sky and really to a dark, star-filled night sky, why does it matter? Why is it important to us? What difference does it make? I have three points, and the first point is the concept that we are all related. In Lakota, Dakota, this is called Mitakuye Oyasin. One of our Lakota elders, Albert Whitehat Sr., wrote about this concept, Mitakuye Oyasin. He says, philosophically, it states that a person is related to all creation. Mitakuye Oyasin reminds us that we all come from one source, the blood of Inyan, and therefore, we need to respect each other. The, through these ways, we maintain Wolakota, peace. He goes on to say that there was only one philosophy, one culture, and one language. We did not separate prayer from our daily life. Everything was the Lakota way of life, and Mitakuye Oyasan was practiced in all situations. Another way to say this is that we understand from an indigenous perspective that our human experience can be simplified into four parts. What does it mean to be human? It means that we have these four parts that make up our being, our essence. So we have our spirits, our minds, our bodies, our hearts. So another elder, uh, Blackfoot elder, Leroy Little Bear, talks about two important concepts that relate to this idea. One, he says, all things are made of energy. In Aboriginal philosophy, existence consists of energy. All things are animate, imbued with spirit, and in constant motion. He goes on to say, exactly, we are all related. In this realm of energy and spirit, inner relationships between all entities are of paramount importance. So here you can see from our Blackfoot elder, Leroy Little Bear, the same idea that we have this connection through the spiritual. We are all interrelated. Everything with life is interrelated by having that bit of spirit that we carry with us. In Lakota, there's another teaching. This comes uh, from Charlotte Black Elk in the book Lakota Star Knowledge by Ron Goodman. Uh, One of the teachings has to do with the Black Hills Pahasapa and the children of four relations. So Pahasapa is known as uh, the heart of everything that is. And just to simplify, it talks about there was a, a troubled time and Maka, Earth, shook herself, cleansing the world. And when this happened, there was like a sort of a rebirth. The Pahasapa remained and stood. What happened is that humans were out of balance. And so the animals got together and decided that humans had to be put out because they were so far out of balance and they were causing these bad consequences. So what happened is they said, well, all two leggeds should be uh, destroyed. But then I'll brought up the fact that uh, bear is actually doing okay. And bear is sort of two-legged, stands up on two legs. 
So in any case, um, that was decided at this council of all animals that there would be a contest and the winner would get their way and decide whether or not the humans would be rubbed out the two legged. So um, what basically what happened, the race was around the Pahasapa, the Black Hills, and um, the animals were going to win, but the magpie uh, went on the back of the buffalo and was able to f fly to the finish line and win. And magpie was in favor of giving the humans one more chance. So interestingly, um, there's this relationship between the animals that says um, we have been given, humans have been given this one more chance. Um, so as Arvo Looking Horse uh, shared with me, when we say mitakuye oyasen, there was really originally a longer version that said something like, and especially thanks to the animals. So the next uh, example comes from Dakota uh, knowledge holder, Ramona Kido Saitley. Hami taku yepi, an petu kinde o wasi, chante washte an ape chiuz apie. Ramona Kido Saitley, amaki apie, damakota. Hello, my relatives. My name is Ramona Kido Saitley, and I am Isanti Dakota. Some of you may know the Dakota as the Sioux, describing the people who lived along the snake-like river here in Minnesota, the Mississippi River. I have just greeted you with a standard greeting in the Dakota language. Dakota is the oldest living language of Minnesota. In fact, Dakota is the language of Minnesota for over 14,000 years. I said ha mi takuyepi, which means hello my relatives. This greeting serves as a consistent reminder that we are all related. And I don't mean just people being related. I mean, we are related to all that is in the universe, including the winged ones or the birds, all of the animals and even the plants, the air and the water. To all the students out there, I want you to think about how you can possibly be related to a tree or a plant. Well, I'll tell you, a tree gives us oxygen, which is what we need to breathe in to live. And when we breathe out, we breathe out carbon dioxide, which is what a tree needs to live. This is an important relatedness. But I did say we are all related, and this includes the universe. And so we are also related to the sky and the stars. Final example comes from our Inanu elder, Wilford Buck. And he talks about uh, the star people um, he talks about how all things were made by creator and have spirit, a chak. And that's why stones are animate, not inanimate. And this is how we're related. So inside each one of us, there's a piece of creator, a piece of this original energy. Um, and that's how we're all related. But this piece of creation will also never die. So we have this spirit. Now I would like to present the second reason that I can point to from an indigenous perspective, why the relationship to sky matters so critically and why we depend on having the dark star filled night sky as a part of our daily lives. This example has to do with, we come from the stars. I'm going to give a few specific examples from colleagues and from my own community, Dakota, Lakota. But I just wanna say that this fundamental idea that we come from the stars is rooted every indigenous culture that I have encountered. So to start with, I'll give example from our Dakota, Lakota teaching. And the idea is not only that the stars are our oldest living relatives, but the night sky is actually the sacred breath that amplifies the idea of the relationship with a relative and the oldest relatives. And by following the night sky, we're actually receiving instructions. It's a, a guidebook of sorts. This is not just about 
making silly pictures, connecting dots and stick figures. It's not even about entertaining stories that we might tell around a campfire under a dark night sky. It's really more like an instruction manual, a roadmap of sort for the place where we came from, the reason for what we're doing here and now in this human lifetime, and also looking forward to the seven generations. In another source, um, we can look to the idea of the Milky Way is the Wanaji Tachanku, the spirit road. It's the road in and out of the star world where we were before this lifetime. And then at death, return on that same road. And of course, going through the doorway there at Blue Spirit Woman at the of the Big Dipper, the scoop in the Big Dipper. Next, I want to point to Ramona Kido Stately's own words and share this short video of the star people. As I prepared for the birth of my first child, I knew that I was blessed by the Creator with a new stage in my life, motherhood. I anticipated the changes that I would experience physically, and I knew that over time I would have to prepare for the Wakaheja, or sacred little one. We call children sacred because of all the people in the universe, the children are the closest to the Creator. After all, they have just come from that spiritual realm and at birth cross into this place on earth. All children are sacred. They are pure, they are innocent, and they are perfect. If you are a child, this means you too. In preparation for my new baby, I created a beaded pouch like many Dakota mothers do. The pouch in the shape of a turtle is the same as the shape of the constellation we call Kea, the turtle. Once the baby is born, we take the umbilical cord from the baby and place it inside the turtle and then sew it closed. This represents the connection to the star world and serves as a lifelong lesson to that child that we are the star people. So while baby is in mother's belly, they are fed and given nutrients through the umbilical cord. Once children are born, that connection is put into Kea, and we reconnect that child to the stars. For Dakota people, we sometimes make these amulets gender specific. For a girl, we use a turtle, and for a boy, a salamander. A turtle is a very powerful symbol for us. Among many other things, if a turtle becomes frozen, it will stay that way until it warms up. Once it thaws out, the heart will beat again and the turtle will walk away. Imagine having such a strong heart. The salamander is similar for boys. Have you ever seen a salamander or a lizard lose its tail? It just grows right back. We see this as resiliency or the ability to heal easily. These are prayers we have for all Wakanisha. The words and writing of our elder Wilfer Buck, we can look to the teaching of uh, the Star People, which starts out as talking about the Star Woman who roamed through all that is. And she came upon the hole in the sky, which in Inanu is the Pleiades. And through that hole, she saw the earth and she wanted to go there. And in order to journey through to this place, this strange place, she needed the help of Grandmother Spider, who resides in the Milky Way, the road of the spirits. She's actually the doorkeeper. So what happened is, is that the spirit woman, star woman, asked Mother Spider if she could help her. And she could send a single strand of webbing down through the hole in the sky, the strand that would help her visit Earth. And Grandmother Spider told her that she would, but there were conditions. And the condition was that Star Woman had to become a physical being, she, and Star Woman accepted. And the next condition is that she could return to the cosmos only after she gave up everything that she experienced while on Earth. Okay, so she agreed. Then Grandmother Spider said that Star Woman had to bring a gift to this strange place to remind everyone of their origin, and Star Woman accepted. So she came to this place to experience, learn, and teach, and explore 
all through that single strand of webbing, which is an umbilical cord. We, this is according to Wilford Buck in his book, Night Sky Star Stories, that we accept a physical form of ourselves on this earth, and when we leave, we give up all that has become dear to us. The gift that was left for us by Star Woman was Star Blanket. The original Star Blanket had seven points to represent the Pleiades, the hole in the sky, seven bright stars. And I quote Wilford, we are the star children. And the last example I want to share here is from our Diné Navajo elders, Nancy Maryboy and David Begay. They have shared with us the word in Navajo for star, which also means original light that evolves, acknowledges the ancient relationship to the original light that came from the original star. It acknowledges all life, including human life, preceded by the original energy of light, similar to astrophysicists' explanation that we are stardust. Ancient teachings tell us that when humans look at the Milky Way galaxy at night, they are actually looking at themselves, from which energies they actually evolved. The third idea I would like to talk about is related to the reason why the dark star field night sky matters from an indigenous perspective. And that relationship to sky really matters. It has to do with a word that is really more of a philosophy or a worldview. It's called kapemini. And in a shortened form, it says, as it is above, it is below. So what this has to do with is that we have our spirit, our mind, our body, our hearts. But the next level of understanding is that there's an above and a below. There's different worlds. One world is that spirit world or that star world, which could be thought of as above. And the other world is the physical plane, where we are now mostly. So these two worlds are equal halves of the whole, and they have a relationship that's a mirroring or a pairing between the above and below. And when we engage in ceremony or intention where we remember this above and below and this reflection, then that places us right there at the doorway, the center, and that doorway opens and there's flow. This is the basic idea of kepenemy. There's flow between the above and below. There's healing. So now I'm going to present uh, the, our Dakota elder, uh, Janice Bad Matheson, to share her thoughts and prayers on this idea. In our Ochete Shakawi traditions, the We Chakbe Oyati, the Star Nation is understood to be the place of origin of the Nahi, the soul. Wanahi Yuhapi, the spirit carrier. We descend down a path worn deep into the handle of the Big Dipper and enter this world through the center of the Dipper between the four stars. At one time, there lived a woman spirit at the center of those four stars in the Big Dipper. Her name is Wechakpe Towi, Lady Blue Star or Blue Star Woman. She is a spirit helper who helps the midwives during child labor and birth. The midwives pray to her for assistance and guidance for a safe and healthy birth for both mother and child. As a Dakota woman, I feel very connected and spiritually anchored by the Star Nation, Wechak Petowi, to the Earth Spirit of Ptesawi, as is above, as is below. Our elders remind us that our second spirit is above and sends us a blessing when we need it down below. As I looked up to the Star Nation with prayerful acknowledgement and thanks, I am home within and above. 
When we pray to Wakanta Kantukashita, we are sending our voice to the star nation, to the sun, the moon, the universe. The universe hears our voice when giving thanks or a need for direction in life. For we are the seventh sacred direction and we shall never be lost and we stand in the center with all of our relatives. Iho. Next, we're going to listen to uh, our other Dakota elder, Ida Downley, and she's going to share her thoughts and prayers on this idea, as it is above, it is below. My elders say the path of our Nagi, spirit, our spirit, is a part of the greater energy of the universe. It is here we meet with the Council of Elders. It is with the Council of Elders that our plan for our life on Umshi Maka on the earth is made. It is through the path of the souls, the Wanagi Kawa Chanku, the Milky Way. We collect um, the mystery of our ancestral blood on our path here. We pick up the spiritual strengths, the wisdom, and the knowledge of our ancestors. We are directed to look for the North Star first, the brother who stands frozen in the universe. It is here that we meet Towi, whose name translates as Blue Woman. She is the doorkeeper between the worlds. Towi guides new babies to a safe delivery. It is Towi who whispers the last of our instructions to guide us in this world. Tui is the one who stands and greets us at the doorway when we start our journey home also. My elders say, Tui was placed at the doorway and well may be the daughter of Ska, the sacred energy named Wopei or her Wawayanka. As we move through the doorway and into our, the arms of our mothers, our grandmothers, or anyone who is acting as a midwife to deliver, this is the one to sing the first song or speak the welcome to this world. Our Wawayanka, our guardian spirit, our Wawayanka, guardian spirit, our Wanagi, the other you is birthed at the same time in the sky world as our Nagi is born in this world. What is below is above. We are connected to our mother and our ancestors by the chekwa, the navel cord, the umbilical cord. When our chekwa is cut, we stay connected to our ancestors through carrying our ma chekwa in a chekwa onaganake, or a navel cord amulet. Another example that I would like to share here comes from the Ojibwe culture. This time of year, as soon as the sun sets and the stars come out and you can start seeing constellations, there's a real important one in the night sky and it becomes more important as the fall goes on. And if you look to the east, you'll see a big square of stars and it is big. It's really a, quite a large constellation. And as the fall goes on, each evening it rises higher and higher. And the ancient Greeks called that Pegasus. Uh, the Ojibwe called it the Great Moose. And it's a big square of stars. And that constellation was depicted on rock paintings. When the Ojibwe who are familiar with the constellations look at their Ojibwe constellations that we have now put together on this map, those constellations become connected with a story, a myth. And then they also become connected with what's going on in the landscape, what you could call it uh, environmental, environmental systems. The word is called local knowledge. That is, if you have local knowledge, it means that you look at the stars and you look at the lakes and you look at the seasons and you look at animal behavior and it all kind of connects together. And you can explain what's going on in the environment. When the moose in the fall 
start to get aggressive and they start facing down hunters and my goodness, a moose will even face down an automobile or a locomotive. In the fall of the year, that's when you hunt moose because the moose kind of cooperate in this and present themselves to you. And the modern sportsman seasons have are located moose, the, the, locate their moose hunting season in the fall of the year for the same reason, for the same reason. The kind of wonderful thing about it is that the Ojibwe tradition says that as a constellation rises, it gains power. The moose, that was the, the old, old stories of a moose. You see moose, you got white legs. They say that's how much snow is going to be on the ground. <laughs> so all those things, also the neck that hangs, they hang it, they cut it off. As soon as they take you, the moose that that represents uh, the stars, so they hang it. So the moose is, is always in the in the stars. It's important to mention that these ideas are rooted in indigenous astronomies all over the world, First Nation peoples. So I'd like to point to my collaborator. Dwayne Hallmaker in, at the University of Melbourne. And he talks about many examples and teachings, but this one is very much in a line, in agreement with our idea of Kapemini, as it is above, it is below. And this comes from an Australian Aboriginal elder. And the, the quote is, everything on the land is reflected in the sky. In a very famous example of this, well-known example, is the emu in the sky. So this is made up of the Milky Way, uh, the band of light, as many of you know. And then the head of the emu is the coal sack, so a dark cloud constellation. And then the body extends down with the dark parts of the Milky Way making the emu body. And there's a lot more important teachings uh, and correlated to the animal behavior and the seasonal events of the animal and the seasonal uh, behavior and events of the people on the land. But you can see in this beautiful rock engraving that it's a reflection, a mirroring, a relationship between the above and the below. I'd like to also mention my colleague Te Kahu Ratai painting. Um, at the University of Auckland. And he talks about the story of Maui and that teaching and how that is actually seen Maui's fish hook in the sky, which in Western science is known as Scorpio with the bright star here, Antares. And then the, um, the giant fish that's told in the teaching of Maui. The amazing thing, though, is that it shows this relationship um, on many levels and many examples, um, but the, the giant fish and the fish hook and the waka, the, the canoe in the teaching, is all reflected in the land itself, in the, the land of New Zealand. And finally, I can include one more example from our Hawaiian indigenous colleagues. This comes from Larry Kumara. And this is a Hawaiian proverb. Wherever I go, I travel with my sky and earth. And Larry Kumara goes on to explain that it is the cultural roots that connect an indigenous astronomer, a Hawaiian indigenous person to place that assures them of who they are. So in conclusion, I would like to say that having a really dark star-filled night sky is of critical importance from the indigenous and the human perspective. I would like to say that our relationship to sky is not just something of entertainment value. It's not something 
of a luxury item. It is a critical, essential lifeline that we need to protect. It's one thing that COVID has taught us, that as different as we are, we share one air, literally, the Earth's atmosphere. And the air has no boundaries. The air takes that big picture perspective, doesn't see politics or gender or race or class. So in the same way, we share one sky. Filamia, miigwech, thank you. I would like to also say that we need to recognize that there is culture in science, but that culture is only one cultural lens, Western European. And right now where we are re-examining so many things, let's take this opportunity to really re-examine science and to widen the lens to include science from all cultural perspectives, indigenous science, indigenous astronomy. I strongly feel that only when we widen the lens can we truly address the critical problems of our day. COVID-19, climate change, Gene editing, artificial intelligence, the space economy, and protecting, protecting the dark night sky. 